Good evening. Good evening. We'll try not to cough all over you. Um, so, yeah, so I've, I broke it into a number of different um, scenarios. Scenarios, yes, because I was reading reading what we were tasked with. Um, I looked at it a, a few different ways. Uh, what I, had, uh, I our beta actually is not working at the station. It's not there. Um, it's not working. So I actually had Joan enter it for me. Um, however, I don't know what happened because. Uh, what David has on his isn't matching up what I had entered on the air, so hopefully you have that. But I have put it on here so you can see it. Thank you. Um, so anyway, so I don't know how you want to go through it. If you want to just go through, I know you would ask for a 2% max increase and you're breaking it between salaries and expenses. Is that below? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to tell us the changes? Well, I can tell you right off the bat, um, so I've given you the, fis the fiscal year 15 budget, and so what we, we are actually working off of. Uh, the 16 level funded, uh, if you see the blue line on the first page and then on the second page, the red line, uh, we've combined PD and fire under one service agreement in order to save some money for our radios. So that $8,000 represents both, and it's now a public safety communications license agreement so that's what that cost is okay and then the the five thousand dollars is the air packs that we were taking out for capital last year so we put that back in because um, it's supposed to be part of our operating budget to um, to be keeping up with our, our air packs air tank does everybody understand that mm -hmm. last year Mike had a large purchase for air packs to get Two years ago to get caught up, um, we took that out of the operating budget, put it into the capital budget to make that purchase. Um, we then had a discussion with finance capital. We decided to keep one air pack in the operating budget and that should keep you current now once you're caught up. So that's why that is in there as is. Okay, so as you can see, air packs are not. So, so that's uh, the level with increase for a contractual ab obligation. So, uh, the wages full time. Uh, we had approved the 48.5 based upon uh, Nick completing some stuff. The actual number is actually in the fiscal year 2% uh, increase max. The 48.338 would actually be his with a 2% increase on what he's getting paid right now, which is $22.70 per hour. So that drops down a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the office manager, uh, I had brought it to everybody's attention for the fall town meeting, and we decided to just let it ride. But her, she is being her pay is based off of the thirteen eight five two. Uh, so we were told that we we're going to try and absorb it or deal with it later on. So that wasn't changed. So that's why that's reflected there. And then the two percent increase. Uh, is the 14126. Uh, salary for the fire chief, uh, the contracted, that's contractual with the addition of the uh, contracted EMD stipend because that was left out. So that's why that is okay. Temporary wages so far, and I don't have a crystal ball, but you know, we had requested $59,000 uh, last year. It was dropped to $50,000. Uh, you know what your actual was on that night? What's that? Your actual? On the temp wages? Uh, How are you doing right now? Well, that's, yeah, we're doing okay. I've been watching that very closely right now. So, yes. So, we had eliminated stipends for officers. Right. And that was absorbed into temporary wages and inspection and duty wages. And so far, it's working pretty good. Okay. However, I can't tell you if there's going to be a lot of brush fires this spring, if we're going to have any more How is, uh, I'm not necessarily worried about that. How is it working for the workforce as far as... Do you think it's it's a cleaner way where guys get paid when they work rather than getting a Absolutely. stipend and not show up? Has That's that right. helped you management-wise? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Thank it you. was actually in our management study. Right. So since the snow's not going to melt until July 1st, <laughs> yeah. we really don't have to worry about brush fires, right? Well, we need worry about brush fires all year, depending on the weather. So anyways, uh, and the inspection and duty wages, I can say I 
appreciate you putting that training back in because that was reduced, but you put it back in and we're on track for that as well. Uh, we also have just adopted under fire regulation the uh, five, our 527 CMR, uh, which is fire regulation and fire law. We've now adopted NFPA 1. So we've gone from a book this thick to a book this thick with another amendment package of this thick. So that is now our new fire code that we are now in the process, which started January 1st of this year. So we are all going through that and educating ourselves. Nick and I have both gone through the state training. Uh, there are going to be some changes to the permitting, which we're working on, which you may have heard of in Anwars as well. But uh, basically what's happened now is they are taking away the fire department permitting new construction. So anything that the building permit is issued to, that's the permit. So we will no longer be bringing in the revenue for the permit fee. Uh, we're not looking at a substantial decrease in what we're bringing in because we had adopted a town, uh, town meeting where we have a plan review fee and then we have basically it's an inspection fee. So we're going to clean it up. Tim and I are working as quickly as we can on that to have that all in place. Um, so as of right now, everything's kind of status quo. So we're not, so for new construction, you're not going to get a building inspection in a, a quote-unquote fire inspection. It's all going to be in that building inspection. The only the only difference is is that he's going to be issuing the the permit to install sprinklers to install right. fire alarms. Basically, all the plan reviews and everything still has to come to the fire department. The inspection process, everything else remains the same. Okay. So is that in the fire receipts line on revenue? The plan review and all that is the okay. plan review fee, which is the, the I mean the permit fee itself is is pretty small. Yeah. Um, so we're working on how we can. You know, Tim's going to have to increase his fee to cover that cost for issuing mm -hmm. the permit, so you're probably going to make it up on that side. Okay. Well, you're still doing the reviews. Right. Yes. And yes. the reviews are what take all the time. That's the four cents a square foot. That's, yes. Okay. So the permit fee was um, what was the max, it was the max allowed by. And it's only for new construction, sprinkler, fire alarms, smoke detectors, food suppression, all the other ones, so oil burners, propane tanks, all the other ones stay the same. Uh, the overtime we kept the same. Uh, we've been managing that very well, so mm -hmm. I hope you're proud of us. Um, the 1,042 only reflects the uh, if we do the increase on, so we keep it at, I believe, 30 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, oil for North Hadley Fire, I kept the same. Not really sure what's happening right now with that. We are we are going through oil pretty quickly, even though we've tried to make some some. Uh, Changes to the where the where the heat's going, but uh, the building envelope is still not very very sturdy. So, uh, but basically, fire prevention supplies has remained the same. Uh, we went over the communication, maintenance and repair contract, uh, building maintenance for center and north. Uh, basically, I just I I revised it so because we're again it's kind of an unanswered question, but if North Hadley is out of the picture, then some of that that we use up there for cleaning supplies and things like that. So, be there. so we kept it, we kept it the same. Uh, there is a 2% increase on um, that third, uh, fourth column. Or that, actually, I'm sorry, uh, the fourth co column is what we had actually entered into the radar. Mm -hmm. right. uh, building maintenance, I'm sorry, fire extinguishers remain the same. Uh, fire vehicle general repair. So we have two different lines that we broke apart so that you can get a good idea. So we have our main line apparatus, our big fire trucks versus our smaller equipment. Uh, our equipment is getting, I mean, our, you have seen our equipment, but our equipment is usually free. It has right. a large number of hours on it. We are, we are doing the best we can to keep it up and running. However, that means that we're paying money for it. So. Uh, we are asking, I did a 2% increase on it, which really isn't that much, uh, but we we're, um, we're keeping it about the same. We kept it at 2%. But we're monitoring that because that line is basically gone pretty much this year. I think we're at... Right. Right, it's almost gone. Yeah. Um, I think we're... Yeah, what does that mean for the rest of the year? That, that you front loaded the expenses or you're coming up short? We're coming up short. So we've had we've had issues. 
uh, farm and physical. Uh, we so I, I gave you uh, the final column is uh, a step and a cola plus what we feel is for minimum service. We were looking to recruit three new members because we've had um, a couple of retirements, a couple of resignations. So we're our standard is that we put folks through a firefighter physical through the town. And we learned that lesson the hard way. Um, again, so we will make do with two if we have to, but we were hoping to recruit three new, not to say that we're going to get three. Emergency medical supplies, uh, again, I did the 2%. What we had entered into beta was 4,000. And we're just, it's getting really difficult to maintain the supplies we need for medical supplies. We're trying to, uh, we're working with PD to share the costs. So we're doing ordering, so hopefully it'll decrease his, his line on medical. But we're paying our DFib batteries, uh, DFib pads that expire. Uh, we take a one for one. So if we go to a call and the ambulance is there and we use a neck collar, we take one out of the ambulance and then they go for it. So anything that we can take, we take. Yep. But we still have stuff that expires. We still have stuff that we have to do. Um, tuitions and meetings. Uh, again, we did the 2% and then what was entered into BADAR. I really had a chance to dig into actual costs on this. And uh, we have Nick on board now. So he has tuition costs. We have EMTs that we have. We have to, you know, recertify with. Most of them are doing their own, paying for their own continuing ed credits, but we're paying for uh, their their main recertification. And then uh, we have the fire chief's professional development, which was extremely useful to me this year. So that's we're trying. I'm trying to give you an actual number on that. <coughs> uh, the tape, uh, telephone, cable, and internet. Uh, again, I increased. We have the level funding. Um, I'm sorry, I apologize. That's not two percent increase. I don't know why that one didn't go on there, but uh, that's an actual cost. So I I went back and averaged the monthly bills, and the sixty one hundred is the actual cost because we have uh, we have added two iPads for our station smart software. We have my cell phone. Nick uses his own cell phone. He's not interested in having one for himself at this point. Uh, cable internet. Uh, the cable uh, cost has gone up, and they wouldn't do one lump public safety one. So we have to pay for the boxes for each TV now. Uh, I think we get the first year free, but this is based on that increase. We have to pay 10 bucks a box or something. You didn't tell them no? Um, well, I was hoping you would do that for us. <laughs> we're, actually, we're actually working on that issue. This is a huge issue for the schools. So uh, the... the, the, the our position is that the language of the franchise agreement is very clear that uh, they have to provide us yes. with those boxes for free and their position is no that's not the, what, what that means. I think we've got the way of the evidence on our side so we'll, we'll continue working that issue. You need yes you need to push hard on them. You do have to yeah. push them against the wall and say this is a it's um sorry side story. I'll stop. Postage remain the same, our emergency broadcasting stay the same, office supplies, I just did a 2% increase. Gasoline and diesel, um, I did a 2% and then an actual, so I averaged the monthly cost of what we're doing now, and the 9,500 is actually low if you multiply the average 880 times 12. Um, so your average monthly bill is 880 right now? Yes. Uh, engine and ladder testing and maintenance again. That's almost gone. Yes, and that's that's one thing that I already <laughs> brought to everybody's attention for the fall town meeting. Um, the 23-3 was actually based upon the three main line trucks that we have at five grand. The normal average inspection that we had averaged in prior years, it came to an average of five thousand. This year, not so much. The average is eight thousand. However, that 23.3 also included a new set of tires for engine three, and it included repairing our deficient ladder. Uh, we're supposed to be getting a new wire track, or that's what was supposed to happen this year. That has not happened yet, or the tires. So you can see that the line's almost gone, and we haven't, and that's close to eight or 9,000 alone. 
just for those repairs. Plus, we have not sent our engine three down for its annual US DOT inspection. So we're trying to squeak by and hold off on that, and we're just monitoring it. However, what's the normal DOT run? Five grand. The normal DOT inspection, the pump test <coughs> is five grand, but then you have to add in ladder testing, <coughs> right? Your inspection sticker, which is a hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, so there's other a lot of other small costs too. Okay. So, based upon this information, and I wish I had better news, but the actual the average cost for PM service now, plus the increase in hourly rates, they have said that they are not projecting any new increases uh, in the next couple years, but I can't tell you if that's going to change next year for the place that we go right now. Um, and they're actually on the low side, mm -hmm. uh, based upon looking at other maintenance areas. Plus it's going to, they have to go to a certified C grade killer. So that's where we're at on that. Uniforms remains the same. Uh, next three, or sorry, the next two, the fire chief uniform that's con contracted, civil the supplies is the same. Uh, the fire supplies, we get a 2% increase, and then the actual for fiscal year from the factory is going to be a 3% increase. So that's for the five sets of turnout gear that we have in, again, to keep right. up, to keep up, which has been working. So. This year is the first year that we're actually starting over in the rack. So based upon the, uh, I mean, most of that gear is now eight years old or nine years, 10 years. If your gear is over 10 years, you cannot train at a mass fire academy site. Uh, NFBA states that gear should not be used over 10 years. So we're trying to keep ahead of that. And it seems to be working right now. Very good. Uh, dues, again, I did the 2%. Um, I went through all the dues that we have. Um, we have fire prevention dues, we have fire chiefs associations, we have fire prevention associations. So I really took time to go through that. We also are members of uh, Tri-State. Uh, this also includes mass call membership. So we have 26 members currently, times I think $15 each uh, annually. So that's as close to an actual number as I could give you. The grant matching funds stayed the same. Uh, computer hardware purchases, that's remaining the same. Firefighting equipment, again, that's for axes, tools, boots, gloves, other stuff, costs. Uh, air pack, purchase and replacement, again, we put that back in. Uh, the air pack maintenance, that's for the service agreement, and then if we have any, any issues, there is a one-year warranty on some of them, but we're close to the end on those packs now because they're. So where would that that where where would that additional <laughs> spend go? That would go if somebody's mask breaks. If right. We have to repair one of them. What we line have, item? I mean. Uh, the air pack maintenance. Air pack maintenance. Okay. Yes. In the <clears throat> that that number has been sufficient to this point. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that includes. I mean, we buy a lot of batteries. We right. Have to replace batteries every six months on them. So you can imagine 30 plus packs times three batteries per pack. So that adds up. Uh, the radio communication radio and repair, that actually went down. Um, we have our new radios in. We're about to be passing them out in the program. So I dropped it by $1,000 with the hopes that we're not going to have any mm -hmm. difficulties with the new radios. Mm -hmm. uh, and this then, year, huh? Yeah. <laughs> And then we have the repair and replacement hose, which remain the same. And I know you can see the historical data on yes. that, and we have not expended that because mm -hmm. we've been using it to cover the costs again. And I can tell you that this year uh, we do need to purchase. We do need to purchase. Yeah, you something. said last year you said had yeah, some hoses were getting bad. Yeah. So, so I think uh, if you if you look at the uh, expense total, not the salaries, but the expenses. I think that we stay within the two percent if you take out the addition of the five thousand and the, the four thousand for the radios. Uh, so I think we kind of maintain that two percent. I know our actual, you know, our fiscal year sixteen, the step in the cola, certainly we're not at the two percent that we have requested, but that's the uh, what we're looking for. Any questions from the select board? Um. Um, Mike, 
thank you for this information, but can we can we go to the other side of the coin here? The the fire receipts revenue side. Um <laughs> they in our five year budget they have that number projected at thirty thousand. 30,500 and then jumping up to 40,000 and then 40,500. Yet historical data says, um, you know, you've been running 18, 19, 21, 23. Where do, you, where do you honestly see that number moving over the next five year business cycle? Well, you'd ask Tim a question about getting an actual spreadsheet of where our fees for inspection so uh, obviously we have Nick on board Nick is still in the process of training on some of the newer stuff land review so I'm still handling that he's doing it with me however he is doing all the home inspections propane oil so he's doing the majority of those uh, so that spreadsheet is going to have basically the annual inspections quarterly inspections when they're due a breakdown of what permits are due into it, so it's gonna we'll be able to track that a little bit better for you and see what we're gonna be bringing in for revenue. The problem that we have is that there's still only two of us, and if you look at our call volume, our call volume has not gone down; it's gone up. Right. So we're running eight to nine hundred calls. So we have two guys in the station during the day. That's the problem that we're facing right now, and it's the you know one of my tasks this year to give you information on the potential ambulance scenario. Um, but you know, there's, we're doing the best we can with what we have. No, I'm glad you brought up the calls. Um, granted, you guys, you guys go to every accident that happens in town, and, and a large portion of your calls is accidents. Yes. Um, and I guess the only thing I'm, I, I think we need to talk about or maybe you need to think about and present to us is it costs it costs the fire department a lot of money to go to all these accidents in this town now you know ambulances they can bill for medicare and w they'll bill for anything they can on an accident if they, transport, yes. if they transport i think what we need or what the select board is going to need in the future from you is a breakdown of you know what an accident, what it costs, number one, to have the fire department show up at an accident and so that we can understand the huge cost that that call volume is putting on your department. Um, and then is there a way to possibly bill for some of that? There, we actually have that in place right now, but it only goes for if there's a hazardous materials response. Right. So when we go to a motor vehicle accident, if there's antifreeze or oil, and we apply speedy drive, then we have the ability to actually bill. Bill. Um, but that's something. Have we been? That, what's that? Have we been? No, we have not. So, you know, again, that's another thing with the amount of people you have to do all of the work. And how, so. it, as far as in that situation, the billing, is there a set rate that the state says you bill for that? Or is that is that arbitrary? Well, we have we have our fee schedule. Our right. fee schedule states what the cost is. That's on our fee schedule. Okay, so I I, I guess I'll phase my <laughs> I'll phase my question this way. We need to look at your fee schedule, um, and go through it and look at things that we can and should be billing for on a call scenario in. Is it getting done? And if it isn't, we need to figure out how to do it because, um, as your, as your, I'll, I'll say your, meaning the fire, as the fire department's calls continue to increase, your budget is going to continue to increase because you have manpower, supplies, wear and tear on material, on, <coughs> on equipment. We need to recoup what we can um, based off of that fee schedule. So I think. You know, obviously, there's only so many hours in a day, but I think it's a task that, that we're going to need informationally where it's on our fee schedule, it's only been billed out, you know, half the time, 50% of the time, whatever that number is, because 
we can look at the expense side of your department all day long. They're going to continue to go up. You have high-priced equipment that gets inspected, that breaks, everything else. I think we have to take a hard look at the revenue side of this department. They'll never pay for each other, but I think there's an opportunity to move that revenue number some and you know, help the general offset of the budget. And I think you have to look at the fact that when our EMTs uh, go on a call, um, it was arranged that way so that they could have the on-the-job training and be at the actual scene and, and assist to the Amherst paramedics with uh, whatever is happening. And, and in some cases, uh, they very much have jumped in and assisted. And I know that you know our police officers uh, had a rare occasion to drive an ambulance up recently on, on a certain house call and you know uh, very important that it, they're, they're all working together and, and getting this great experience and um, you know it's a valuable thing. Well, just so you know our guys are first responders and EMTs so we're the first yeah. ones there so right. a lot of times we're yeah. there and you know we're doing an initial assessment and making sure everything's going in the great. right direction so yeah. yes we work very well we've all been working really hard with Amherst but mm -hmm. Again, that's. I mean, but it's a great first yeah. step to where we oh, want to be. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, but I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, that's down the road. What yeah. I'm saying is, is I'm concerned. I understand what you're saying. There's also a flip side of that. And there's a lot of fire departments that are getting in trouble throughout the country for how fast they jump into an accident scene and start hacking up a car, saying they're making it safe because of hazardous materials, and then sending the home. The, vehicle owner a bill that's quite high for things that didn't need to be done. So as we as we look at that, you know, some departments their first thing they do is pop their hood and start cutting battery cables. Um, and, and, and that those are things that it needs to be balanced. Well, so I, 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 I have another heard heard discussion that. for another time. Yes, absolutely, because yes. I have not heard that and I can tell you that we are very cautious with what we do with car accidents. No, there's other country there's other states that are talking about that. So why don't we just go on to communications? Okay. I, actually, could I ask? I did forget one thing, and I know you're talking about the uh, employee hour thing. So, uh, in the the final for office manager, when she was originally employed, uh, the board at the time was concerned about having. I had originally requested 19 hours, but there was a concern that we were just doing it to get away from giving out uh, giving her, the person benefits. that was hired benefits. Um, so that was a request to increase to the 19 hour. To in the now. you're talking in the orange column. That's the that's, orange column, that's right. 19 hours. That's 19 hours. Right. Yeah. You wish the manager, office manager, office office manager. manager. Yes. So what we, we and I think to, David has that on the bottom. Oh. He does. It's on the top. Yeah. Are you looking to increase those hours? Yes, to 19. She's 15 now. Okay. Why don't you go to communications? The service budget you've oh yeah, we've already done that one yeah, yeah. it's just in the book yeah just, just the way Good. the pages are on the excellent so I can get back up on my soapbox no no, no. no. all right any other questions about the fire budget uh let's go ahead yeah <clears throat> Brian brought up on the accident the accidents are at physical medical accidents or strictly automobile. There, uh, I'm assuming we're talking about automobile accidents. Okay, and I think rightfully so that they, the insurance company, should be billed for those accidents. You know, that's a true cost to the town, and I think that really the town is missing the boat by not going after that. And uh, one yeah. other question I have: surplus vehicles that are purchased through the fire department. Did the fire department reimburse for that, or is it in your budget? They're not purchased. We get we get um, we get our vehicles from the Department of Defense or the Bureau of Force Fire Control. Their surplus equipment. And what about the registrations? The that registration fire comes out of, that comes out of our budget. Yes. Are you reimbursed from other departments? If you were. For the registration for the department. No, they they take care of their own registrations. If it goes to another department. But I see some fire plates on. That's other correct because it's required that they run fire plates. So it's a piece of fire apparatus. But, but it doesn't come out of your. No, budget. that's correct. Good. 
Computers, um, you, you have $1,500 in, which is pretty steady what you've been asking for computer hardware purchase. But, and then you also mentioned that there was a, a problem with uh, Vader, and I'm not, this isn't about Vader, it's about the computer. Is that because, why, why is there a problem? Is it computers behind? No, the laptop that we, that we had it on, mm -hmm. the hard drive went kaput, so we lost it. And I don't know if police have Vader. From what I, what I heard, they don't have is computer, is You're running other computers? You're using computers in your office? Yes, for billing right. so it's getting it back, back on. So. Okay, are, are those um, a problem? Are, is this part of your computers are up to speed? I'm yes. just trying to figure out whether we get are they part of our issue that we're exploring. Here? We will. Okay. We have we have uh, our cloud system is now working, mm -hmm. so that's working very well. And we got one new laptop, which is part of that. And then our iPad pads are part of the station smart okay. software. I don't know if you're here earlier, but we we're talking about doing more well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike.